After our debate on uh, Pope Francis uh, and after asking the question if uh, he is a liberation uh, theologian and uh, which, uh, in which sense, if so, and uh, we have uh, very different opinions, uh, and it's good so because we have a different uh, um, life experience and also different experience with the church as an institution, the Catholic Church and other religious institutions. So today um, I would like to propose you to focus to not so much on, uh, on the Catholic um, uh, church as an institution, but on uh, a very important, uh, as I mentioned last time, a uh, very important uh, and new phenomenon uh, connected not only with the Catholic Church, but with all uh, Christian uh, confessions uh, and uh, also, also with other uh, religions, namely uh, a phenomenon of distancing uh, uh, him or herself from the institution of growing number of uh, followers of uh, religious institutions. Uh, they are called nuns. Uh, those who, when asked in different uh, uh, circumstances, particularly sociological research, and they, uh, when asked to which church or to which institution or to which religion you belong, uh, he or she answered to none to any religion, I just live for my own. And uh, in order to, to have a, a, also a, a good debate, well, uh, with uh, good arguments, I propose you to read uh, four uh, articles. Uh, they are not so very long, uh, but I hope they are illuminating or illustrating the topic from different uh, perspectives and uh, I enumerate them uh, in the chronological order. The oldest text uh, was delivered at uh, Fordham University during the conference. Uh, this text was never published, uh, but I know the author and I ask him uh, permission if I can send uh, this uh, manuscript, this paper to my students and uh, Peter Fan uh, was more than happy to hear that uh, students at Warsaw University will read his uh, paper dedicated not ex uh, explicitly to nuns, because this term uh, is there, but non, non as nuns. He called them spiritual, uh, but not religious. So more or less the same phenomenon. And the, the, the article is, is entitled Spiritual and Religious, Multi-Religious Identity for Spiritual Seekers. And uh, Peter Fan himself, uh, he's a theologian, an American theologian with uh, Vietnamese uh, roots. And if uh, you happen to look at this newest issue of Contact magazine, which I mentioned, and some of you sent even a link to it, is an interview with him. As a representative of this progressive, liberal form of Catholicism, and I think this is uh, very interesting, this context, to see this text uh, by, by Fan and his appreciation of uh, spiritual seekers as a very positive element for all uh, religious institutions, a kind of challenge to renew their old uh, forms, traditions, uh, etc., etc. So this to start uh, please read the uh, Peter Fan article, and uh, I'm interested. Uh, I will be interested in, if 
to hear what you think about you share his enthusiasm for this uh, uh, spiritual uh, seekers who don't want to be any more part of the institution and they develop this individual path a spiritual uh, path for finding and looking for uh, spiritual happiness the second uh, article which i humbly uh, submit and i ask you to to read is my own uh, published three years later after uh, a fans uh, article and it was prepared for the conference organized by our center uh, american studies center at warsaw university uh, and i already five years ago uh, found it as a very interesting uh, phenomenon uh, which i linked with uh, american pragmatism title of my intervention which after was published and you will find on, on platform uh, this essay a new uh, religious uh, category uh, nonce is this new uh, religious category a new form of american pragmatism because i, I uh, when i wrote this five years ago and you will find also in footnotes some literature connected with this i i, I found it as a very uh, pragmatical approach to the uh, to religion to spirituality and so on and so on so uh, in the spirit of john dewey and other pragmatists uh, of the end of 19 and the first half of 20th century where uh, John Dewey, Peirce and many others were looking for practical dimension of philosophical research, philosophical reflection. So here is also when I am not satisfied with what I see around me, I look, I, I look for my own way, for my individual path. So it was my idea to, to categorize nuns as a, as a new pragmatist, religious, philosophical, theological pragmatist. And after I found also very interesting uh, article, which I put uh, on the platform by Linda Mercandante, uh, entitled, How Does It Fit? multiply religious belonging spiritual but uh, religious and the dances of universal peace it's a longer a little bit baroque uh, title but the same you will find this uh, a very positive attitude toward uh, those who are courageous enough or you know, with this very strong imagination that they are people who are not satisfied to 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 leave to be only part of of one uh, religious tradition but, but are trying to combine different traditions and i think this is a, a very concrete as in case of fun and my own article also here uh, in linda merkan Dante's um, reflections, you, you, you find uh, this description of people who are practicing liberation theology, it means uh, they are immersed in this process of developing a very individualistic uh, form of religion. And uh, she used uh, an expression in the title and also developed uh, in, in, the, in the article as such, multiply religious belonging. Actually, this term was invented and coined, used for the first time by Peter Fan. She don't quote him, I don't know why, but probably because it became so uh, familiar to everybody so that in the same time you can um, feel at home with different religious uh, tradition and this is a very uh, i would say modern uh, and typical for uh, plural, uh, pluralistic societies but it was natural 
in in far east in asia in uh, india in china in japan it was nothing extraordinary and this is uh, Peter Fan wrote an entire book on it, uh, exactly entitled The Multiply Religious Belonging, that uh, some practices like meditation, for example, you can take from uh, Buddhism. Uh, if you are living in Japan, you, because of form of, of your heritage, you could practice Shintoism. But you can, in the same time, because you saw uh, beautiful ceremonies of ma marriages, ceremonies in, in the Catholic Church as very interesting, very nice, pleasant. Uh, so you ask uh, Catholic priests to be married in Catholic Church, although you are not Catholic. So it's like syncretic approach to, to religion. And the Church accepts this. And I think this is very uh, interesting and even amazing that uh, some of you could have or could hear about from your uh, friends, parents and, and uh, relatives, how sometimes this is problematic in Poland and to, to get married in, in the Catholic Church because you have to, to go through some preparatory courses, uh, you have to demonstrate that you go to confession, and so on. So very bureaucratic procedure. But in Japan, uh, because it's the only contact with the, with the Catholicism, you can just uh, uh, go there, have your ceremony, your wedding, and it's all. You will never return to the Catholic Church. And this is why Church accepts this. And, and so on. You, you can have many, many examples like this. And the, the, the fourth and the last article which I send you, and if you will have time, I encourage you to read, is uh, written by a politologist, Ryan uh, Bird, uh, entitled How Many Nuns Are There Explaining the Discrepancies in Survey Estimates? Uh, and this is very recent, from 2020, uh, sometimes boring, perhaps tiring, uh, uh, very technical, but it's worth it sometimes to, to enter in these technicalities in order to understand how sociologists of religion are constructing their uh, theories. And you can uh, also confront them with your own observations. So it's a kind of invitation uh, to enter in the field work of sociologists and to, to see how far you agree or not and why there are differences between different approaches. So technical, but nevertheless, we are in academia at the university, so we try to to get familiarity with what is going on in the, in the research. So I hope that all this will give you a more relaxed approach uh, to liberation theology. We don't have to to be so um, immersed in the, in the debate in the church, but we can have a, a distance to what is going on in different churches, different religious institutions, and just uh, have this uh, uh, distance to uh, what the other are saying and try to understand different, uh, different perspectives. And I think this uh, academic approach is very fruitful because it's giving you a, a really a very good insight in what is going on in, in the present time. And of course, we are not theologian, we are not uh, uh, interested in defending or attacking uh, such or another form of religiosity, we simply try to understand. And the nuns, this new sociological group of people who uh, write uh, their own uh, religious history using their own brain, mind, etc., is perhaps an encouragement to, uh, 
imitate them.